Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'd like to plant a new holly shrub and this is a little bit of a risk for me because of the placement that I'm choosing. So come with me and let's talk about where I'm going to put this new holly shrub and why. I recently purchased a new holly shrub. It's called Berry Magic Royalty and basically what it is is two holly plants in the same container grown together as if they're the same shrub and uh, one of them is a blue prince male holly and the other is a blue princess female holly and the idea is that when you plant them together in the same container then the male will be already growing right there right within and beside the female and so you won't have to have two different plantings uh, one male and one female in order to get berries on your female plant you'll have them as if they're the same plant so essentially it's a self-pollinating situation although it's technically not so when this grows it'll grow to be its full size which is whatever the blue prince and princess sides sizes are uh, but it will have berries on almost all of the branches the male stems won't have berries on them but the, all the female ones will and you can prune it so that the male ones are kind of on the interior or uh, maybe just fewer of the male branches compared to the number that are female and that way you can get berries covering a lot almost all of the full-grown shrub. This particular specimen was grown by Monrovia and again is Berry Magic Royalty Holly Combination. It wants to be in full to part sun and it says it's self-pollinizing but as I just discussed it's not really it's just that you don't have to have a separate planting of the male plant because it's already included here. Now the size and shape of this, first of all, it can be pruned into a specific shape like a, a cone shape or uh, whatever you want. But uh, if you leave it, then in 10 years, the size is eight feet wide and 10 feet tall. This is hardy in zones five through nine and six to eight feet wide, eight to 10 feet tall. It uh, blooms in the spring and it has winter berries, as you can see and it wants to be in part to full sun. And I'm choosing to put my eight foot wide, 10 foot tall holly tree right here, right up on my top of my garden, right in the middle of this particular planting bed. This planting bed is roughly six or seven feet wide, so it'll fill end to end when it's mature. And this planting bed is roughly 12 feet long, so it'll fill up the middle portion of this entire planting bed and it will grow to be eight to ten feet tall and so i'm going to have this huge holly shrub right here evergreen with winter berries and uh so you might be asking jenny why in the world would you put such a large evergreen shrub right there well the reason is because i would really love to have a large evergreen screen up here at the top of the garden so that the view of the yard isn't fully available to you from anywhere in the garden. I want to have the idea of secret rooms or what's around the corner, the mystery of discovery in the garden. And right now, as soon as you come in the gate right over there, you can see all the way down to the bottom of our garden. And I want to block that view as much as I can. I want to provide some privacy to the patio table that's right there. Privacy from the driveway so that when you're dining at that table, there's a buffer between you and the driveway, but more importantly, the street that's down beside the driveway. And I, I just think it would be a, a nice way to incorporate some winter interest. This is where we walk up from the driveway through this gate, through the courtyard. And so when you stand at the gate at the courtyard right here, in the winter, you'll see this gorgeous big evergreen holly tree with the beautiful berries all over it. And um, you know, what's not to love? So as I was planning this out, I took some photographs of this space from a bunch of different angles. And so I used my computer to kind of superimpose on top of those photographs. What would this look like if this were six feet wide and eight feet tall or, you know, 10 feet tall? And so that's the reason I'm going to go ahead with this project. I, I like the idea of having a big, tall evergreen structure here. I like the idea of the privacy that it gets and the mystery of what's around the corner that it begins to create in this very wide open backyard. 
Now, as far as planting, I'm not going to be doing anything particularly special. I'll dig my hole. I'll use Biotone starter fertilizer to get the roots off to a good start. Um, I do want to position the, the shrub so that the berries that I see, I know this is the female portion of the plant, and I'm supposing that this is a male branch of the plant, um, and this is a male branch as well, but I feel like, well, there are quite a few male branches and then uh, several female branches. So what I'm gonna do is position the berries that exist right now and the female branches that I, I know are here. I'm gonna position them facing the fence uh, for the purpose of enjoying them primarily from this approach. And you'll also see berries when you approach from this side and when you approach from this side. You'll see berries from all three of these. The only one you won't be guaranteed to see berries a lot is when you're sitting at the table. Although, depend again on how I prune it, I might be able to get some of those female branches to come through the plant over to this side and then as it grows up, uh, prune the branches so that I get a lot of female branches on this side as well. But I'm, I'm prioritizing the view from this approach, which is when you're coming down from the house, you'll see berries. And when you come up from the gate and look at it this way, you'll see berries. And then when you come up from the bottom of the yard and look at it this way, you'll see berries. So let me just pop this in the ground real quick. It shouldn't be hard. Well, I'm not sure when it happened, but my camera fell off of the place that I had set it to take the video of me planting this. So I don't know how much of the planting you actually got, but it wasn't anything different from normal. I just dug my hole. I put some water in the hole to get it started because it was kind of dry after I uh, dug down a little bit. And then I put in some biotone and then I just planted it. I did leave the front edge of the plant about an inch or maybe a half inch above the native soil line, but then I put a ring of soil around it to form a moat so that when I water, the water doesn't all run off downhill. It actually goes down into the planting hole. And then when I get the new mulch on top of it, the rest of that root ball will be covered. It won't be exposed to roots after the mulch is in place. Um, so it's done. Now I want to talk a little bit about the placement and how it relates to the other things that are already planted in this bed. This is a bed that uh, was recently disturbed because we had this wall recently built. You may have seen those videos. And so I had to take out a bunch of plants that used to be in here. I had some irises, uh, some nepeta, some tall sedum, and I forget what else, but uh, a lot of, most of the front half of this bed is empty now because I had to take things out for this wall to be built. What I do have remaining in here is this Silver Princess Euonymus, and it has a partner over here on this side. Um, so I had originally put them in this location relative to each other to kind of frame the entrance to the backyard, but I'm thinking that now that we have the stones, that redefines everything in the backyard. So I don't think that the Silver Euonymus Silver Princess Euonymus needs to stay here in this paired up situation. They can be put in different places, in my opinion. In fact, maybe I could put one here and then one down there to kind of frame this little bed against the fence. I don't know, that's just an idea. Um, I also just planted this Let's Dance Rave Hydrangea here. This is one that I'd had in a container for a year and a half and it was time to put it in the ground. And so I put it here on this side of this stairway and I put a partner one over there on the other side of the stairway. So uh, when you're looking here at this walkway up onto the upper patio, you have flanking hydrangeas, which I think is nice to have that little tucked in symmetry here. I may or may not plant something else here on this very front corner. I do need to get mulch over on this side. I haven't done that yet. But I don't have symmetry all the way here because over on this side, I have Magnus, purple cone flowers. I don't have that over here. So we lose symmetry as soon as we get away from these uh, hydrangeas. All right, so the purple cone flowers are here. 
up on the top back side, there are some plants that have already gone dormant for the season. That's a David Phlox. There's a daylily here, and I don't mind this daylily because it's pink tones. It's not the orange dish lily kind. There's some candy tuft back in there. That's a gardenia. It's probably going to move because I don't like its location anymore. Um, and then over here, there's more daylilies. Again, these are pink ones. And then there's two of these hosta lancifolias, which are fillers in my garden. And then there's a really nice big stand of uh, white balloon flowers or platycodon. And uh, this one always needs staking, but I do like having the, these plants here. I've enjoyed this garden. But with my long-term plan for this holly, almost everything in this garden will eventually have to be moved. I don't really know how long it's gonna take for this holly to grow to be full size, but I do know that it will grow to be that full size assuming everything goes well. And so all of this stuff back here is gonna to have to move. Um, this could probably stay, but I'll probably move it. The hydrangea eventually is gonna to have to move. Um, so when the time comes that the holly is so big that it's got a six foot diameter at the bottom, then all of this planting is gonna to have to be rethought and reimagined and uh, done something else with. But for today, for now, certainly for the 2023 season and probably 24, maybe even 25 seasons, this arrangement is fine because this holly is not going to grow wider that fast. And by the way, I could prune it in my, in, in my pruning that I do on it to keep it taller than it is wide in the early years to preserve more of this planting for longer. But also you may know about me that I don't mind moving plants. I move them all the time. It's part of the fun part of gardening for me is rearranging things. Just kind of like rearranging your bedroom when you were a 14 year old girl. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is my project for the day. I wanted to just chat through those decision-making processes with you. And then I wanted to ask you, do you have evergreens in your garden that are functioning as a screen for um, creating vistas and creating mystery in your garden? If you do, share that in the comments down below. Tell us what you used and where you put it and how you used it to create uh, a sense of wandering or a sense of discovery in your garden. And let's all learn from each other about that. I'm hoping that this strategy works for the purpose that I have in mind. I think it will, and I hope, I'm hopeful that um, it, when it's mature, it's going to be a really glorious decision, uh, a glorious result of the decision that I made today. So that's it, real quick and easy. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful day in your gardens, and I'll see you again in another video real soon. Take care, bye-bye.